All right, next chapter is about Kubernetes services. Kubernetes services are a general, uh, well, is a particular kind of uh, objects, of Kubernetes native objects to be precise. It does not necessarily relate to replica sets alone. We will see that uh, services can be used um, in a very versatile way, way. You could, for example, create a service for a pod if you want to. You could create a service for um, a stateful sets, which we will do in later exercises. It, uh, replica sets and services are presented here together in one chapter because it is the first time where we could really make use of a service because of what we've just learned that um, the pods in a replica set do not have stable network identities and that we would like to have uh, a stable network identity to connect web applications uh, to another. All right, so let's create our first uh, service. The service here um, has the purpose of being part of what, they, what is called a service discovery. It means um, that one service wants to know where a particular other service is. There are several uh, ways on how you can solve this. A service mesh, for example, would be uh, offering, uh, would offer another uh, or, or other opportunities to do um, service discovery. But Kubernetes services are a very simple way on do a simple service discovery. In particular, the task in our application would be to locate uh, or to find out the IP address of another pod or to get some uh, network connection to the other pod by referring to something that won't change um, if the replica set changes. And that's the purpose of the pod, uh, of the service. So we create a service with of the kind service. It's just a, a Kubernetes object. So we refer to an API version. Uh, we choose the kind service. We give the service a name, in this uh, case, sample go web s. We specify the, uh, the service by providing it a selector. So uh, in this case, the selector would be sample go web uh, a can't work. And the service is meant for port 8080. All right, so let's create it. Set later. All right, so we check whether this has worked. So we now have a, a service here. You can see that it is a service of the type cluster IP and that we'll have a cluster IP. We don't have an external uh, IP. So there could be other types of services which is currently outside of the scope of the training, uh, but there could, be, there could be other services too. Uh, and that the service is uh, has an open port 8080. What does this mean? Um, let's investigate it. So there's a cute, a cute little tool called Cube Proxy, which uh, well which I could use. Oh, I'm already using that port. It basically gives my, uh, creates a reverse proxy so that I can use um, uh, localhost 107007 on port uh, 8002 to um, create or to access the cluster uh, from within. Um, an alternative to using a cube cuddle proxy would be to uh, conduct my experiments with uh, uh, our little uh, inspect uh, pod here, where that allows me also to uh, issue commands from within the cluster. Um, so let's see how it works. Okay, so let's 
try it. So what this does is I'm invoking um, in my browser the URL localhost 8001. That's not found here because I'm on 8002. And this one doesn't work. All right. So there's another Kubernetes uh, running on uh, on port 8001. And here you can see um, what's the return value. It's a 404. Uh, it cannot find the simple cool web service because it doesn't exist in the other cluster. And for port 8002, it doesn't work. And that has a particular reason because uh, the kube uh, cuttle proxy on the remote cluster I'm using uh, uses uh, a shared load balancer for different uh, clusters that are behind that load balancer, which means I have to um, I have to provide this kube cuttle proxy command additional um, additional arguments. Let me figure that. Uh, let me figure out those arguments. All right, so what did I do? Um, I actually told um, the Q pro cuddle proxy to accept arbitrary hosts, and then I modified with the little uh, browser plugin um, the header, the HTTP header I'm sending to uh, I'm sending to the cluster, which means I'm sending the host uh, of my Kubernetes cluster along with the with the request. Uh, it's a temporary uh, temporary solution here because um, on our platform pass89s.com we currently have many Kubernetes clusters and especially for clusters that are meant for testing purposes uh, it, it's not necessarily uh, or it's not really necessary to have a dedicated uh, load balancer in front of each cluster. If you have a dedicated load balancer with dedicated domain uh, then you don't have to do this uh, but if you have, let's say, 20 or 30 different clusters and you, and you have to create a, create a load balancer in front of a Kubernetes cluster for each of those um, individual clusters, this becomes expensive and also increases the price for the Kubernetes cluster. I think in future releases this will be gone. So um, if you, for example, use Minikube or, or other alternative Kubernetes clusters, this is a trick you don't have to pull off. All right, so in this case, um, the the web service, let's, let's look at the URI, URL first, how it's built, how it's been built. And then we look into the response because it shows an error and we have to dissect this a little bit. Um, so one of the takeaways here is that if you create a service, then you can automatically create this URL, systematically you can create this URL in order to reach out to the service using kubectl proxy. 
this is in handy t this this is very useful because with with kubectl proxy you can then access your web application although you don't have an ingress for it and we will see what an ingress is later um, all right so localhost it's localhost because uh, the local uh, the reverse proxy has bound to localhost uh, I bound it to port 8002. Um, I want to have uh, the API version 1. Um, I'm choosing the namespace K8S training, which is our namespace. I want to have a service, in particular using the HTTP protocol. Uh, the service name is called Sembago Web and on port 8080 in our proxy. So, um, we are basically p performing a request to that particular application now that's behind the service. Now the problem is, it says, there are no endpoints available for this service. So we need to investigate that, but because wh wh how can we connect the service to our application? That's the challenge, and we did not connect it properly. So let's look into that problem. So we have simple go web and now we kubectl describe the service simple go web s. And we can see that the selector here is app simple go web a can't work. Well, it already suggests that this is a mistake done on purpose. You can also see that there are no endpoints. There's a port. But there's no endpoint. And this is what this failure message tells us, no endpoints available for service. So how can we get rid of this problem? Well, we go back to our service definition. And we look at the app selector here. We look at our pods. And we look at the labels they are using. So the label is different. This one is using a uh, simple go web A, but our service is using simple go web A can't work. So let's modify it and choose as the selector the particular key value pair that's used in the replica set and subsequently in the pods. Because this is the same for all the pods because it is in the replica set specification. In particular, it is in the pod template section of the replica specification, which would be, we can have a look at this too. So the replica set itself has the same label, but it also applies this label to all the pods. So this is where the label of the pods come from, and this would be the label of the replica set itself, because it's also an object, it also has metadata. All right, so our attempt now is to match the label of the label of the replica set's pods. This would be that one. So let's see whether we can kubectl apply. kubectl describe the simple go web service. Ah, we always have to specify that we want to describe a service. And now you can see suddenly there's an endpoint. And the endpoint is this IP address. So we are curious folks and therefore we look at the pods It. 
So uh, with this uh, option minus white, I don't have to describe the pods all the time. I'll get the IP address directly in the listing. So you can see that the simple go web NLPR5 has the IP address uh, 31.12. And if we look into the endpoints of the service, the endpoint has automatically fetched the IP address of the corresponding pod. Now, how is this possible? Well, they both share the same lab label and it was looking for pods with that label and determined that this should be the endpoint. So if we reload here our application, we can see that now we are accessing the app. So the app is hosted on a remote um, Kubernetes cluster that's run somewhere uh, on pass99s.com. By creating the reverse proxy, uh, with kubectl proxy, uh, which would be uh, over here, um, we can uh, perform requests to that cluster, although we haven't configured external access. So um, it's not a public domain, uh, so to say, which is a handy uh, a tool. So as described in the tutorial, you can see that this is a systematically built um, URL. And if you have another service with a different name, you just have to replace the name here. Different port, you have to replace the port. You do HTTPS instead of HTTP URL. This could be a bit more complicated because of the certifi certificates, but well, then HTTPS here. Namespace goes here. Uh, and if you change the port for the reverse proxy, which would be a uh, this fellow here, well, then you have to change the port here too. So you get the idea. Kubectl proxy can be useful. However, um, if we don't have kubectl proxy because it doesn't work or uh, you don't want to use it or you're not allowed to use it because of network restrictions, whatever, we can also use our inspect. Um,